at the White House is Brian Kilmeade in Washington, D.C., fresh off Fox and Friends and with uh, my favorite chief of staff of the President of the United States, General John Kelly. Hey, General, Brian. Great to see you in person. Yeah. All right. How you doing? I, I know you're a very busy guy, but you were smiling. I just, it's hard for me not to notice, even though you know, always have a great game face. You feel pretty good about last night's speech. I thought it was terrific. I mean, the uh, the team worked with the president. He's very involved in, in uh, putting his material together. Uh, he rehearsed it. Uh, but most importantly, it was his speech. And believe me, everything he says, even though there are help, you know, he gets help from speech writers, it becomes him. He's very involved in it. It was a great speech. You're as close to signing off on a two-year budget. I think so. Yep. Are you close when it comes to some type of the president put out his four pillars? You're all over that. So this is what he wants. I would Start tell talking. you. On the, Where are we at with that? I would tell you on the four pillars. I still think the other side is stunned at what the president rolled out. Uh, the fact that he is uh, not only dealing with the 690,000 official DACA recipients, but he's extended that to people who would have qualified had they gotten off their. Uh, well, had they registered like they should have. So 1.8, two and a half times the uh, DACA size, and path to citizenship. That is, I, I know this, beyond comprehension to the Democrats. This solves DACA Plus. Uh, and the rest of it, but there's no point in, in solving DACA Plus unless you ensure that four or five years from now there's not another DACA. Is it literally yours, you served and you're waiting for the return volley? I heard the initial uh, department head meetings with Steny Hoyer and Dick Durbin and the kids, uh, Republican counterparts didn't go well. Nothing really happened. Well, I mean, we, we uh, the first couple. You were there, right? Uh, sure. Uh, the first couple, a lot of chit-chat. Um, but one of the things they both sides have been asking for is what is the president's plan? Right. So we gave it to them on uh, on Monday. This is the president's plan, the four pillars. Um, DACA, which I think, again, is beyond their dreams uh, in terms of the number of people we're going to include. The fact that, uh, yes, we're going to do away with chain migration or, or uh, family, in a, but no one's going to get hurt by that. There's about 4 million people in the pipeline. They'll still come in. We're still going to take in 1.1 million um, right, uh, immigrants. It's been misreported. We're going to cut it in half. But We're are, not. But are you guys going to talk this out? I mean, you sound reasonable. There, there's some things they're reasonable. It's on the table. So now we, we have this. We have this thing in, in the U.S. government called the legislature, Congress, and the White House. We have given the legislature, the Congress, I hear you. where the president is. Now it's up to them, men and women of goodwill, to sit down. But that first pillar about the number of people that will be included and a path to citizenship. I still think it's got the uh, the Democrats breathing hard. Do you, uh, do you uh, as we look at this uh, whole thought about the memo, the president yesterday did not want to overwhelm the State of the Union speech, but he says he told somebody, one of the congressmen, it's 100 percent, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off to release this memo that Devin Nunes' Intelligence Committee produced out of the House that will show some disturbing information about what went into the investigation on Hillary Clinton on down to, uh, to what went into the background on him. Do you, are you, Rod Rosenstein and uh, and and the FBI Director Ray don't want you to release the memo? Will you guys? Uh, the the memo four pages uh, came over uh, day before yesterday. Right. Uh, the 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 unique thing about all of this, frankly, is in in every other case that I can remember in my lifetime where a president uh, was uh, in some kind of trouble, the president, the White House, attempted. To not release things, uh, whether it was whether it was Iran Contra, um, uh, but certainly uh, uh, things like uh, you know, the, the Nixon years. This president has said from the beginning, and certainly since I've been the chief of staff for six months now, I want everything out. I want this thing. I want the American people a to know uh, the truth, and b that the investigators and whatnot have everything. It's it's really unique in that we've leaned so far forward to get this out. Now, as far as the memo goes, the memo came over. Uh, we've got our folks in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, um, uh, our national security lawyers in the White House that work for me, work for the president. Uh, they're slicing and dicing it, looking at it so that we know what, uh, what it means and what it understands. Did you see it? I did. What do you think? Um, well, let the, it'll be released here pretty quick, I think, and every, the whole world can see it. Do you think that, what, what changes the next day after? Do you think things change the next day after, you think? Again, I'll I'll let uh, I'll let all the experts decide that when uh, when we when it's released. But I, this president, again, it's so unique, Brian, that he wants everything out 
so the American people can make up their own minds. And if there's people to be held accountable, then so be it. Remember also, uh, another uh, document that will come out sooner rather than later will be the uh, the DOJ, Department of Justice's uh, IG report. That'll be uh, that'll be kind of an addition to what uh, Devin Nunes and, and his folks have discovered. When I'm going to play the soundbite now. When General Perkins, a four-star general now uh, over at the Pentagon, heard about this, he's head of recruiting. He said, "I want to come on your show and straighten it out." This is a high school teacher addressing out in California, El Rancho High School. This is a teacher talking about the military. Cut 42. We got a bunch of dumb. Shit over there. Think about the people who you know are over there. Your freaking stupid Uncle Louie or whatever. They're dumb. Shit. They're not like high level thinkers, they're not academic people, they're not intellectual people. They're the freaking lowest of our low, not morally. You know, I'm not saying they, they make bad moral decisions, just they're not talented people. Says the military a bunch of dumb blanks. They're not high level thinkers, they're not academics, they're the lowest of the low, they are not talented people. What is your reaction to that, knowing that these are he's teaching a bunch of seventeen year olds this? Yeah. Well, I think the guy ought to go to hell. Um, I just hope he enjoys the, the liberties and the, and the lifestyle that uh, that we have uh, fought for. And I'm not sure you can, but I know what you mean. <laughs> I just had to share that with you, General, because it's caused outrage around the country. Yeah. So, thanks so much for your service. You look good. You're smiling. <laughs> it's like, this is a pretty easy job you got. Oh, it's, it, 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 it's easy. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I get to work at 10:30, 11. I get home by five. It's it's a great job. Fantastic. Yeah. But first, you got to watch Fox and Friends, right? All the time. Yeah, right. Believe me, I watch Fox and Friends every day. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, and God bless America.